Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I will explain what C++ Insights is and give you a little introduction in where you can find it and how you can easily use it. So today's episode should be no exceptions to all others, but we will talk about no except. So no exceptions there, right? This is a transformation I relatively recently added to C++ Insights. So consider this, this simple function fun here. All it does is um, adding two plus three together and returning the sum of these two integers. That's a pretty, pretty simple function. And I think we can be really sure about the fact that it will not throw an exception. So we mark it as no except to give the compiler optimization hints and um, prevent that on all the call sites, we have to add try catch blocks around this. If I transform this, mm, with the, the standard options, then nothing happens. Um, we simply see this function, it, it's no except and it's two plus three. Have you ever asked yourself how no except works? So I assume you all know that it means that this function never throws an excep exception. And if it does, then the compiler will immediately call to terminate and try to shut down the entire program. So this is what no except practically is for. And most of the time we need it for move semantics to have our no except types being moved in the standard library containers or in our own implementations. So this is where no except really um, is intended for. Now there is an educational transformation here show no except internals. It's nothing that's really there in the AST, but you can see it in the resulting output. If you look at Compiler Explorer or something like this, or in your compiler, how they generate this stuff around. So this function should not throw an exception, okay? And the compiler is supposed to call to terminate. What the compiler can do at this point then is to remove a little bit of the exception headers because it knows that this function never throws an ex exception. So there is no stack unwinding required ever, but it needs to call us to terminate. And the implementation, at least for Clang, I looked at exactly like this. The compiler builds a try catch statement around the body we write in the function fun inside the function fun. So this one here, this try catch comes from the compiler. And in the catch case, it says to terminate, okay? all problems solved. And here we have our original function body inside the try block. So should this one fail, then we have a regular catch here, catching it and immediately calling it to terminate. By that, the standard requirements are fulfilled. This function can never throw an exception, okay? So this is how no except works. And while it is good because we don't have to write all these try catch blocks around um, each call to fun, um, we now end up with a lot of calls to, to terminate in all these functions that are marked no except. So this is also maybe worth to know and consider when using no except. It's vital for move semantics. And now you see how it works internally and can decide whether to use it for other places as well. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.